Please welcome Dr. Julian Fennessy of the Giraffe Conservation Foundation. Hi, everybody. Welcome uh, to uh, the sort of period after a break, which is always challenging, let's be honest. But uh, talking about a lot of chaos today, I'm going to tell you a story about hope, about success. We've heard Thomas Kaplan talk about snow leopards and what a wonderful thing we are talking about there. But what we want to talk about today is giraffe. Has anyone ever seen a giraffe in the wild? Fantastic. There's a few people out there. What I hope is that my children's children get to see giraffe in the wild. And this is the problem that we might have. Giraffe, unfortunately, are going through a silent extinction. And I wasn't quite sure how I was going to be introduced today, so I got someone special to introduce me. Julian and his wife, Steph, run the Giraffe Conservation Foundation, or GCF, from their home here in Fintuk, the capital of Namibia. It's the first giraffe charity in the world. So Sir David Attenborough, many of you might have met him, heard him. We we're very fortunate enough to have an Emmy-nominated documentary recently done on our work and how we work with partners across Africa. To us, giraffe conservation may be not about markets, but it's about people. People are the future of Africa. People are the future of the world. But unfortunately, people are also chaos. These are the ones who unfortunately are causing the major decline in giraffe across the continent. Who would have thought that for the last 10, 15 years, we've been able to figure out that giraffe numbers have declined by almost 40%. You hear about elephants all the time. You hear about lion. You hear about rhino. Who would have thought literally the world's tallest animal might be sinking into a silent extinction? So this is something that has been really scary for us to understand. And more importantly, we don't have the marketing train of the world to tell everyone that giraffe are sinking into this decline. From approximately 150,000 giraffe to less than 100,000. And if we look at, that's only over a 30 year period. If we look over the last 100 odd years, we're talking about more of than a 90% decline. How did this go missing before our eyes? How did not the big conservation players out there realize that something needed to happen and something needed to happen fast? Why did it take an Australian with a funny accent and a German wife living in Namibia to help hopefully save giraffe before it's too late. Well, I don't think we've got there. We're far from it. And what we need is we need investment for the future. We look at art, and art is beautiful. We love art. But why are we not investing in the human capital, or why are we not investing in the natural capital to save giraffe? If we lost giraffe in the world, is it not as nice as a Rembrandt? Is it not as beautiful as a Van Gogh? Why? It's very, very odd, especially when the threats that we're facing, this is Nairobi National Park in Kenya. The giraffe are literally being penned in. People, population growth. The bottom line is, we've got to stop breeding. And if no one believes that, with the human population growth in Ethiopia going up by approximately 2 million per year, the land that giraffe and other wildlife rely on is just seemingly getting smaller and smaller. We're fortunate as an organisation to be the only giraffe conservation organisation in the world. Seems really bizarre. There's lots about lion. We've heard from Tom Kaplan again today about panthera and the snow leopard support and others. But we work closely on the ground across 14 countries in Africa. This is us here in Niger, counting the last West African giraffe. If I was to tell you that 20 years ago, there was 49 individuals left in the world. 49 giraffe in West Africa, not one in a zoo anywhere else, people would say, no, that's not possible. But today, working with the government, working closely with partners, especially local partners, we have now more than 500 individuals in West Africa. And it's even more unbelievable because this is in Niger, or as you guys would probably say, Niger. This is one of the poorest countries in the world. So they have taken the initiative to say, we can save giraffe, so why the rest of the world can't help us save them before it's too late? 
We focus on a few things. One of those is strategic planning. If you can't plan, just like in any business investment, you're not going to see what the future holds. So with that, we work with governments all across Africa to be able to make a difference. With that, we have field implementation. We get on the ground. We count how many giraffe are there. We literally translocate giraffe. We provide support to many organisations to be able to say, what can we do and you do together to save giraffe? And importantly, environmental education. The kids are the future of tomorrow. So some of you may or may not know that in the last couple of years, giraffe have been thought to be just one species. But we've been doing a little bit of genetic research, and I'm not going to take you through the nuances of it. But we've found out that there is at least four species of giraffe. If you look at this picture, to me, they look quite different. It's quite funny. Most people will say, well, a giraffe is a giraffe. You can see the coat pattern looks different. Everyone like, really? It's still a giraffe. The head structure is a little bit different. Some have three ossicones or horns, some have five. But most importantly, the genetics between these shows that there's a, sort of a separation of one to one and a half million years. That's more distinct than a brown bear and a polar bear. Now that makes more sense. But giraffe and its conservation is critical based on this work. Three of these four species are critically endangered or endangered. The one called the West African giraffe, which is the second one from your left, part of the northern giraffe, number less than 5,000 in the wild. And there's been a decline of almost 95% in the last 30 years alone. To me, that's frightening. Do we want to see a future where our giraffe are never seen by our kids in our future? It's pretty frightening to me. So ongoing research really is the basis for conservation. And so by understanding this, we can better manage giraffe. We can encourage people to invest in the future of them and saving them before it's too late. As we said, we do this through partners. We work really closely on the ground, whether it's governments providing support, providing assistance. We get to move giraffe across rivers. This is one of the coolest things that you can ever do in your life. And importantly, we're trying to educate both Africans but also internationally that the more skills we have out there, the more we can do for giraffe. Environmental education, as I mentioned earlier, is critical. This is in the country of Nambia. I think your president knows it quite well. <laughs> Namibia, not the country between Namibia and Zambia. It's Namibia. But we have a program where we take thousands of kids out into the wild every day. Oh, every year. Most kids have never seen an animal before in their life in most of these countries. And just 10 kilometers away, give or take six odd miles, we take children out to better understand their natural environment around them. We provide healthy lunches. Most of these children, it's the only major food that they're gonna have for that day. These are our future leaders. If we can convince them a little bit about what we can do together about how we can save the environment and how we can better protect the environment, hopefully giraffe and everything else around it will be saved. So I just want to take you on a bit of a conservation safari. In particular, I want to take you to a country called Uganda. Uganda in the 70s and 80s had a lot of political unrest. There was a lot of civil war. There was a young gentleman called Kony and all his rebels who basically plummeted the northern part of the, uh, the country. Uganda, numbers of giraffe, elephant, and many other species just went missing. Fortunately for Uganda, people came together and chased Kony away. But that wasn't fortunate for those in the DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo, or in South Sudan, or in Central African Republic, where unfortunately Kony and his people are still causing problems. But Uganda is a success story. Uganda is a gem. The people are beautiful. It's called the Pearl of Africa for a very good reason. Giraffe numbers there up until only a couple of years ago were thought to be about 600. So we thought, well, let's form a relationship. And we have an agreement with the government to be able to provide conservation management support for all giraffe in, Af in the country. In the last three years, the population has doubled. It's only because we counted them. 
We can physically go out and have a look at the coat patterns on every individual, just like your fingerprint and a CSI TV show, we can tell who's who in this big giraffe zoo. So we've been able to work closely with Dartmouth College. I'm a professor uh, associate at, uh, in, at Dartmouth in New Hampshire, and we have amazing, clever kids on the ground to be able to do this. But that's only one way that we do it. Another way we do it, really importantly, is by doing new conservation actions. We can save giraffe by telling the world. We can come out here and say, I'd love you to donate and support the work we could do but we need to get on the ground to make a difference. And one of the ways we do it is by this. So from this chaos, I want to bring a story of hope. We are able to move some of the most endangered large mammals into the world to set up new populations. In Uganda, we've set up, we've doubled the amount of populations in the last two years. We now have four populations of endangered Nubian giraffe. This is just a small thing we can do to make a difference. And what I would love and what I'd like the world to do is come together we can, in this whole chaos situation, make a difference. We can truly invest in the future of our kids and our kids' future and their kids' future to be able to save giraffe, the habitats in which they live, before it's too late. Gold is lovely, but a future without giraffe would be very, very sad. Thank you. <laughs>